introduce you. So this, <laughs> <laughs> this is Vicky, and she is going to be talking about how to hack the tech ecosystem. So I'm going. She's clearly very keen. So I'm not going <laughs> to waste another minute, and I will let you continue. Enjoy. Real. Um, oh, does this work? No, it also doesn't like that. We might not be starting. Oh, now it's going to play really quickly. Ah! <laughs> we'll just, I'll just, I'll just do it. I'll hack it. <laughs> okay, great. That's my face, really big, on a screen. Um, so, yes, I am Vicky Hunter. I have worked in tech ecosystems uh, for about seven, seven or eight years now. And I'm definitely more on the sort of people side of tech um, and, and business side. And I think an important question probably for me to ask at the beginning of this is who, who you all are so that I don't end up just patronizing you for the next 15 minutes. So can you put your hand up if you are a, consider yourself a tech like as, and you're, you fall into develop, uh, development tech person. Okay, I nearly swore, but I held it back. Uh, okay, and put your hand up if you're more on the business side of things. Okay, that's still loads of hands, that's fine. And would any of you consider yourself early stage in your startup tech journey? Okay, you're my favorite people for this talk. So I will, I will try to um, hack my own talk and, and make it relevant to everybody, but I do apologize if you feel that the beginning of this talk is a little bit basic. Um, I started my tech journey up in Newcastle on an accelerator program called Ignite 100. I quickly found myself in the center of London's tech scene, working uh, at Google campus for a co-working company, and then went on to work for a company called The Three Beards, where we ran lots of events. And that's where I really found my stride, is in bringing people together. So bringing the techies, the entrepreneurs, everyone in between, and helping them to um, get together and, and make things happen. Um, so now I work for Tech Nation, um, recently moved to the Southwest. I'm based in Bristol and I cover the whole of the Southwest as the Entrepreneur Engagement Manager, which is a bit of a mouthful, so it's fine if you just refer to me as an EAM. Um, there is a team, oh, hang on, play. Pause. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Never work in tech. Okay, um, so yes, there's a team of Eames across the country that do the same role as me, all the way up uh, in Scotland, um, Northern Ireland, and as you can see, across the country there. Our job is to signpost, celebrate, connect, um, enable an ecosystem of people within tech, um, trying to build businesses and making the UK the best place to start, grow um, a tech business. This is going to get kind of annoying. So, my talk today, how to hack the ecosystem, how to hack the tech ecosystem. I actually chose this title before I knew that there was a sort of security focus, so well done me. Um, I'm going to start with some basics, as I've said. Um, and this is, it's really for people thinking, how do I get started? So my first question is always to say, what have you already got? So do you simply have an idea? I think most of you in this room are maybe beyond that point, so I'll skip on to, do you have an MVP? Have you started developing traction? Really have a moment of self-reflection and work out what it is that you have, and therefore, when it comes to the second question of what do you need, you'll be able to answer that better. Um, what are you looking for? Are you looking for advice? Are you looking for specialist skills? Maybe you're at the hiring stage. Uh, do you need funding? It's one of the biggest challenges across the country is access to finance. So once you know what you want, then you can really look at the ecosystem and how, um, and, and think about how you're gonna get it. The first thing, of course, is to look at your existing network. Who do you already know? It might be that you don't know anyone. And that's also fine, that is what the community is all about. Trying to keep um, the doors open, be very accessible. Um, but most people will probably know somebody who knows somebody, and it's really important that you start talking about what it is that you're doing, what it is that you're looking for, and reach out to those people. So, 
Events and meetups, you're all here today, so you've, you've uh, smashed that box already, well done. Um, I was talking to someone the other day, and I said, oh, well, you know, meetup.com, and they looked blankly at me, so it, it really does change my audience that I'm talking to. If any of you haven't heard of meetup.com, it's a really good place to find meetups uh, in your local area, and if you're running anything, it's also quite a great, uh, good way to uh, get people along and let people know about your event. Um, online communities, this could be anything from Facebook groups, there's lots of startup groups on Facebook, um, it's great way to get started. People in there will know how to signpost you to other things. Slack communities, WhatsApp groups, um, probably shouldn't say WhatsApp. What's the other one that's much better and much less secure? Telegram. Telegram, much better. Um, um, incubators and accelerators. Again, this will depend on what type of business you have, what stage of business you are. But it's worth tapping in and talking to the people that have run these incubators, because even if you are later stage than the incubator or accelerator, those people are still super well connected. They're a wealth of um, advice um, and connections that can help you. Um, and of course, then there's lots and lots of different layers of government support. One of the hardest parts of my job, moving back to the UK, moving to a brand new region and starting a job uh, for a company that is funded by government, was trying to unpick all of the local LEPs and WECAs and LSPs and DSPs and everything that acronyms were mentioned earlier, I am not a fan. Um, but there are lots of things out there to help you. So a little piece on behavior, and I was a bit worried about giving this this slide, but in my experience, being at the events that I've been at over time, some people don't know how to behave. And I'm sure everybody in this room does. <laughs> um, so I'd just like to share a few things. So when you're asking for help, asking for advice, be clear and concise. Um, one of my least favorite things is when I get an essay style email from somebody I have never met, and I have no idea what they're asking for. I get to the point where I just reply saying, Thank you for contacting me. Can you send that in three bullet points? Um, so be clear and concise. Um, the caveat to that is don't be blunt or rude. <laughs> um, so trying to, to balance that fine line. Uh, be professional and proactive. As I said, I used to run tech networking events, and this was fairly early days within London Tech, and it was predominantly male and being a woman, I found a lot of people were not particularly professional. I don't need to go into details, but if you've come to a professional networking event, behave as though you're there for professionalism. If you do like somebody and the conversation goes well, that's great, but there are ways of asking somebody out, and there are many ways of not asking somebody out. Um, so yes, please do be protective um, and proactive. Proactive, I think, is really important. The number of times that um, I will introduce somebody, I'll make a connection for them by email, I'll say, great to meet you today, here's the person I suggested you talk to, here's a personal introduction, and that person that I've given that introduction to doesn't follow up. So both myself and my contact are, are kind of left hanging, left waiting, um, and it feels, it feels like oh, I'm not going to help that person in the future if they don't even follow up to say thank you, they don't follow up to say I've looked into this person and, and thank you, but actually I don't think they're relevant or actually I've already got a connection to them. Just being proactive and saying, thank you very much for introductions, I'm gonna follow those up. And then if you do have a great response from a connection that's been made, just saying thank you to it. Um, you can see at the bottom here a little tweet that somebody sent me, great to meet you today, thanks for your generosity and intros. That took 20 seconds for her to write, but made my day because I felt like I'd done something worthwhile. Um, be self-aware and say thank you. Well, that's, that's exactly that point. So when you're asking for help, realize that other people, I'm sure a lot of you people are these people in the room, um, your time is fairly limited, you're very busy, and when you help somebody and they say thank you for your time and they appreciate that, it really does make a difference. So, hopefully this is moving into the part of my talk that's maybe a little bit more relevant. Um, as I've said, I work for Tech Nation now. We, who in this room has heard of Tech Nation? Okay, a smattering of people. Who feels like they know what we do? Fewer of those people, good. <laughs> okay, um, so Tech Nation, quick background, was originally Tech City, that's uh, very London focused, then there was Tech North, and then last year those two were kind of pulled under a much more umbrella brand, Tech Nation, which is actually the name of our report and has been the name of our report long before we as a company were called Tech Nation. Um, 
My job is part of that national rollout, rollout. Um, and as I said, I cover the whole of the southwest, one person for a very large area. Um, I've set myself the target of knowing everybody and everything about tech in the Southwest before Christmas. I'm going to fail, but hopefully by being here today, <laughs> I'm going to get closer to that target. Um, we run a number of different programs. I'm going to use that as the loosest sense of the term, um, and I'm going to go through those today. This slide is a really great overview um, to help you kind of understand where our support lies. Um, in the past, it's probably been nearer to that lower, under that bottom line. Um, as tech and the ecosystems across the UK have matured, we are moving ourselves more into that mid-stage line because there is a lot of support for tech, there's a lot of support for startups. Um, what is being recognised now is there's not as much support for scaling companies and that there are lots of pitfalls at every stage of growth and it's important that they're all supported. So we're really starting to look at scaling companies, um, but of course still recognise the need to be having conversations with the earlier stage companies so that we've already got relationships with them when they become scaling companies. Um, so. Maybe I should try and do this at the speed that the computer wants me to. No, I can't. Um, so our Digital Business Academy, good news, this is completely free. You can log in today. It is our uh, digital MBA. You can go and learn all sorts of different modules um, and it'll track your pro um, progress and anyone can do it. So it's everything from should I be an entrepreneur all the way through to my business is now scaling, the culture is changing, what do I do, how can... What are the things I should start to be think about? So it's really great. You can do it at your own pace. You can do sit down and do it all in one session. I don't know how long that would take. Um, or you can sit down and do a few modules um, every now and again when you've got a moment. Founders Network. Founders Network is our Slack group for early stage founders. It is going through a transition period. I think it will be starting to aim more at slightly larger for um, later stage companies. Um, but again, completely free. Actually, everything we do is completely free. I'm not gonna have to repeat myself on that. Everything we do is free. Um, so Founders Network is a great way for you to connect with other founders across the UK. Um, there might be questions around funding, there may be questions around Brexit, there may be any of those kind of things, and it's a great place. There are lots of other good Slack groups. Um, did I mention a Slack? It's a Slack group. Um, there are lots of other good Slack groups in the Southwest as well, um, but I always say, what's, what's the harm in being on one more? Um, if Slack's something that you find engaging and that you're kind of on there every day anyway, it's great to kind of dip in and out of. Rising stars, okay. So what I'm not supposed to tell you, and I will definitely not tell you, that is that next week, on the 17th of September, three of our programs go live for applications. That is completely off the record. Um, heard it here first. Um, so Rising Stars is our competition for early stage founders. Um, it's a really great competition. I came in in January to start this job and came in at the end of it. So I went to the finals this year. Um, which was in London, it's very sort of razzmatazzle, lots of lights and a very full audience, mixture of investors, people from the entire ecosystem. Um, and I should start from the beginning. So three, only three companies will go through from the Southwest. I really want them not all to be from Bristol. Um, I'm based there, it's easier for me to have good connections there, but I'm really, really determined that I cover the Southwest, I don't just cover Bristol. Um, if I can have one from Cornwall, one from Devon, <laughs> one from, yeah, each, there's too many counties, there's more than three. Um, <laughs> but it would be really great to see a, a nice spread. Um, obviously there's not a limit on how many people can apply, um, but there will be only three applications going through to the quarter final, uh, to the semi-finals. Semi-finals happen in Manchester. Um, it is a morning of pitching, um, pitch training, improving your pitch, um, and then pitching to judges and in front of your peers. So it's closed um, pitch semi-finals. Then as I said, the finals themselves is an open event, Really, we, we specifically invite a lot of investors, important people within the tech ecosystem, um, and 20 of the companies will be going through to the final, and there are 10 winners. So it's not too ruthless, it's not too cut, cutthroat. Um, this year we had two Southwest winners, and one of those have gone on to one of our mid-stage programs. So, and their feedback was that 
being involved in Rising Star gave them um, a lot of exposure. It gave them kind of the credentials that investors felt more confident in investing in them because they had been won. So they had won. There's also a bunch of kind of money towards ticket, uh, conference tickets and free consulting and things as well as the prize. But I think really what it is is it puts you in the spotlight if you're a winner of that. Um, so yes, this one is going live next week, but you didn't hear it from me. Um, oh yes, look, that's some of those testimonials that I mentioned. So in the middle there, um, Amy King from People Matter. She's a co-founder, so she's based in Bristol, and Nigel, her co-founder, is based down in Bournemouth, which is great because I got two founders, two regions in one. Um, and she really says that it's given her recognition. You can, can read that there. Um, so then that takes me on to the sector programs that we had. Um, Pause, FinTech. Um, so I'm not gonna go into super detail in all of these sector programs because they're all fairly similar. They focus on a sector and um, they're targeted at scaling companies. FinTech um, cohort was announced recently and there were a number of, with the Fin, oh gosh. Sorry, I also have my notes on the same slide deck. So I didn't see them. Um, FinTech was Tuesday down in Cornwall and Tumalo in Bristol, and there may have been a third. It'll come back to me. Um, but a great, it was uh, the second year of doing the FinTech cohort. This is a program rather than a competition. So what does a program mean? It's six months, it's a non-residential program, it's dates for the diary, that's the way I explain it. There are workshops on everything from marketing, finance, growing, HR during um, scaling, um, we bring a lot of our alumni that have been through these, been through this process already, to come back and teach the courses. Um, there's also an offsite at the beginning. There's a lot of focus on peer-to-peer -peer learning. You will be with the, what we consider to be the best fintech companies from across the country, um, and we really encourage people to network and make the most of that. Um, and that's the same for all of these, which I will just let the computer go through. Um, so yes, cyber. Applied AI, and then we move on to our mid-stage. So, pausing on upscale. Upscale may or may not be also going live on the 17th. Um, and upscale, again, is, is one of these programs, so it's the six months with the dates of the diary. The criteria is fairly scary sounding. Do we have any, um, any people in this room that would consider themselves a scaling company? I should come and talk to you afterwards. Um, you might have changed your mind when I tell you the criteria. Um, so the criteria for upscale is they have to be HQ'd in the UK. That is the same with everything that we do. Um, you should have raised a meaningful Series A, which off the record is 3.5 million. Um, and you should be scaling 20% month on month. Now that is not a profit or revenue, it doesn't have to be profit or revenue, it could be user acquisition, it could be your team is growing that much. I think that it's open for interpretation because I'm not sure who measures month on month growth. growth. Um, but if that's, still, if that's still relevant, then definitely come and talk to me. Um, okay, how am I doing for time? Oh, okay, rattling, rattling. Late stage, future 50. May or may not be going live for applications on the 17th. Yes, so a lot of pressure on me at the moment. We're going for a triple call out next week. Um, and I have a month to six weeks to try and get as many of the best tech companies from across the Southwest applying to these. I like to think that the Southwest is one of the strongest um, regions when it comes to tech outside of London. Um, London is just a different ball game when it comes to some of our metrics, um, through, such as applications, and that is, a, it's the capital city. B, there's a lot of people that live there. And C, Tech City has had a presence there for about eight years now. Um, so I want to make sure that the Southwest is coming out on top. Um, so when I was talking about hacking the community, hacking the, the ecosystem, this is me hacking the ecosystem. Tell everybody um, if there is a good tech company out there that fits into Rising Stars, Upscale, or Future 50, please do tell them about it, about these programs. Do tell them to connect with me. My details will go up on a slide here soon. Future 50 is really for those big companies. Um, it's for the late, we've got Monzo and Deliveroo, the 
likes of them on there. Um, so it really is for those bigger companies. Um, I can't remember the criteria um, because I only recently got told, but um, come and grab me. Uh, I think it's like you should have raised over 10 million. Um, so if you fall into this, let me know. Um, but yes, please do tell everyone about it. Support. Oh yeah, this is a little sneaky one. Uh, we do charge for this. Uh, so I lied, I'm sorry, I've abused your trust. Um, we offer a visa, um, so we are part of the tier one exceptional talent visa, which is actually very useful for universities because the perfect case study is somebody that's been studying um, you know, a PhD, they're highly skilled, they're highly trained, they've got potential for exceptional talent, um, they might start a business that then might hire other people. Um, they should be looking at the tier one exception, uh, exceptional talent visa. Um, unlike... A, a lot of the other visas, the visa belongs to the individual, so they're not tied to a company, which is really, really good and important for tech ecosystems because it means that the talent doesn't feel restrained. It can, you know, pick and choose, and therefore everybody has to try and be nice to their their, their talent and try and retain it. Um, when I say we give them, we look at the applications, and if they are. If they're correct, if they fit the criteria, then we pass them on for evaluation. So you can't, unfortunately, bribe me to get a visa, which is a shame because I make lots of money. Um, I think that that is it. Yeah, so those are my details. Um, that is, it's always a bit pointless putting a, a link on a slide because you can't click it. Um, but just to highlight that um, the <coughs> Southwest page has lots and lots of links to good resources. So if you are looking for meetups to join, if you are looking for um, places where you might be able to find funding, do have a look on there. And if you are one of those places and you are not on there, please send me a nice email and tell me politely that I've missed you off and I will add you. Um, if you tell me in a cross tone that you are very upset that I've missed you off, I will still put you on because that's my job, but I won't like you as much. Um, <laughs> Those are my details. Feel free to tweet me, email me, make any connections, ask any questions. Um, thank you very much. Have we got any questions? We do. We do. Yeah. Are there any sectors mm. you see the most growth for, especially in the well, growth is a hard question because I've only been in the job since January. Um, but I think our sector programs are based on what the government has deemed important and where they've seen growth and strengths across the UK. So fintech is is a very, like London, like the UK is the strongest fintech um, place in the world. Um, and we're seeing more and more of that spread out regionally as well, um, which is great. Um, cyber... <sighs> So the kind of metric that I can use to support this is um, how, many um, how many successful applications have we had on um, the cohorts that have rolled out since I've been here. Been here. We've consistently, the Southwest has consistently been, outside of London, top one or two. Um, is that right? I'm going to put a little asterisk of, check with me later, but I'm pretty sure, because I'm fairly competitive. Um, Manchester... Uh, we're neck and neck with Manchester. Um, sorry, I should say the north northwest. Um, but yeah, we, basically we deliver. We're strong. We've got a bit of everything. Some of the conversations that I have in roundtables and things that I go, events that I go to is that the southwest has a little bit of an identity crisis, or at least maybe Bristol, Exeter, in saying we are the best at and then naming one thing. It's just that we're actually quite good at most things. Uh, I don't think that we're a jack of all trades. I think we're sort of really good at everything. Um, so yeah, growth is, is a hard one for me to answer, but um, I think that there's a lot of promise here, and I think it'll be very interesting to see over the next five years which of those sector programs that we, we offer as, on a nationwide, which ones we really start excelling at. <laughs>